You're watching today through fires, floods and a one in 100 year pandemic. Premier Dan Andrews has led Victorians through a turbulent nine years, but today his leadership comes to an end. Let's bring in Victorian opposition leader John Pasuto in Melbourne. John, thanks so much for joining us today. You must be breathing a sigh of relief. Is this the best chance you have of finally making a dent at an election? Yeah, well, thanks, Sarah and Carl, for having me on. Look, I think this, this change represents an opportunity uh, for a little bit of a reset. But, look, it may not matter who the leader of the Labor Party is because the contenders, as far as we know, uh, have been co-pilots in Daniel Andrews' premiership over the last nine years. So uh, whether it's debt, which is on its way to $200 billion and rising, whether it's mounting corruption reports or just gross waste and mismanagement a la Commonwealth Games and major projects blowing out, it's hard to see how things will change. I think there is, though, Sarah, a sense of relief that the Premier is going. Uh, but I think that relief will be short-lived when the new leader emerges, whoever it's going to be, leading the same tired, old, corrupt party. So uh, opportunity for some renewal, I suppose, on the government side, but it won't change a thing. John, uh, with the greatest respect, have you got your act together? I mean, you've been towed up by Dan Andrews for nine years. Well, it's true, Carl, that he's won the last three elections. And, and look, there's always a, a question about what's victory for and what's the purpose of acquiring power. And I think the real debate's going to be, sure, he's had electoral success. No one can deny the last three election results. But I think the more important questions, Carla, what did we get for that? You know, what is the real legacy, whether it, uh, those things I mentioned, debt, we've got taxes going up everywhere. We had a new tax last week, which is the 50th new tax. So I guess on my side, Carl, what I'd say in terms of leading opposition, it's always challenging, but we had a recent by-election result where our primary vote, and I stress it's the primary vote, went up by 10%. So we've got work to do, but we're on the right track now and we're focusing on providing the Victorian people with the alternative they need and applying the, the scrutiny that, that we need every government to face. I guess that's something you haven't been able to do over the past nine years, though, John, and that's the issue. There's this lingering view that Dan Andrews has been so successful because the opposition has been so ineffective. Well, I think, Sarah, it's a fair point to say that he won the last three elections, and we've been all but we've been working hard over the last ten months to rebuild. So I've had two electoral tests so far in my leadership uh, over the last ten months, Sarah, and we've won both, Narrakan and and late, laterly uh, Warrandyte with a, an increase in the primary vote. So we're, we're working towards that end and making sure that by the 2026 election, Victorian, Victorians will have that choice they deserve. And that they haven't got it in, in the last three elections, that's to be, to be said, but, but equally uh, we're working very hard and we're making progress. We're consulting with the Victorian people on important questions around cost of living, which is out of control down here. Mm -hmm. What makes you think that it's going to make um, any difference um, if Jacinda Allen uh, becomes the Premier, which is likely to happen? Um, I don't. Uh, is, there, is there anything that, I, that, that you can see that is suddenly going to appear to make your job easier? Or is it just that he, he casts such a, a large shadow over the place? I suspect, Carl, that as with any long-term leader going, it will unleash a lot of internal tensions. And it's clear that within the Labor caucus, there has been mounting evidence that there is dissension amongst different factional groupings. So I can't see how, whether it's Jacinta Allen or Ben Carroll, will be able to manage all of that with uh, Daniel's departure. But in, in a sense, it may not matter because whether but if, that, it's if Daniel... that's all you're hitching your wagon to, um, then you've still got big problems. I mean, who's to say that she doesn't? Yeah, look, I, I, I do think she's going to face those difficulties, but I guess the broader question, Carl, is a lot of the things that have gone so horribly wrong, whether it was the Commonwealth Games, $600 million at least torched, completely wasted, or major projects which are blowing out to more than $30 billion and all overdue, uh, the question is, can anything change under Jacinta's leadership or Ben Carroll's leadership? And I don't think mm. it can. In fact, I think the challenges internally for them will get greater. But more importantly for our viewers, in particular Victorians, I think life will continue to get harder. Dan Andrews is obviously stepping away from politics altogether. There will be a by-election in his seat of Mulgrave. That's an opportunity for you as well. What do you do now? Do you sit back or do you attack, attack, attack and hope for something better? Yeah, the party's going through, my party that is, Sarah, we're going through the internal process as you do. So we're looking at that, we're talking to party members and stakeholders and we'll make a decision in the coming days about Mulgrave. Um, how are you going to, I mean, if you, if you were to get into office in three and a half years, yeah. <laughs> it's a long time away, um, the debt will be at about 200 billion by then. Mm. How are you going to pay it back? Yeah, look, I think the first thing, Carl, is 
the major infrastructure portfolio of, of projects needs to be brought under control. That's not to say we don't continue to build, but there's no cost control. And what the Auditor General has said, and this is not me saying as opposition leader, the independent Auditor General is saying that there's no cost control. They're all just being passed on to Victorian taxpayers. So we've got to get control of that because it's, it's not some irrelevancy to the side. When you have major project blowouts, it means that you don't have money for hospitals and mm. education and child protection. We've got to get control of that. We have to stop corruption and waste because millions and millions of dollars is being wasted just on those alone. Can I just say something, John? I think Victorians are frustrated. I just think, you know, we mentioned before about how you've been ineffective, but there's just, there's, they don't have an opposition. The government's able to push everything through because you guys can't stop them. It's that simple. I mean, don't you owe it to Victorians to at least put forth a contest? And that's what we're trying to do, Sarah. So, Warrandyte, we did definitely do that, and we saw a, a move towards us, a 10% increase towards us. But, Sarah, I, I, I get the point. As an opposition, we're working really hard to present the Victorian people with alternatives. So, one of the things we're doing at the moment is we're talking to Victorians about cost of living and tax measures and how we can ease the cost of living. One of the big problems down here now is that it's the least attractive place in Australia to invest. So, we're talking to business groups. We launched a discussion paper recently with the Chamber of Commerce and Industry down here in Melbourne with other mm -hmm. stakeholder groups. So, we are very conscious we have yeah. to do the hey, work. Hey, John, did you speak to um, him yesterday? Um, and what did you say? No, we haven't had a chance to okay. speak, but I'll reach out uh, in the coming days. You'll say au revoir. See you later. Yeah, look, look none I'll of this is the door here on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> look, I think I think Maybe we'll have a few together at the footy. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, I don't see any of this as personal. Look, All and right. I do want to recognise he served in the parliament All for right. 21 years. Good yeah, on you. Incredible. It's not personal. Cheers. It's just business. Good on you, John. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Best of luck. The head